the next part. Hey, hey, Stephanie, I think we really got to work on that lyric. Hey, people. I'm Graham, and we're talking about individuality. Individuality is discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference. I know, I know, I haven't had lunch yet and I'm already eating candy. I can make decisions like this. You can too, when you're older. Don't you just hate it when someone tells you to wait until you're older? I mean, it's not like you're a baby. You're not age zero. Of course not. And you know what? You use your head. You're no dud. Why should you have to wait until later for what you want now. There's got to be a better way. Well, in today's story, we'll learn about a young man named Timothy and his mentor, Paul. Why shouldn't Timothy be able to make a difference even though he's young? Well, it turns out there's just no reason. I don't think that's spelled the same. See you when you get back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Timothy of Lystra must have felt like he lived in two worlds. His mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, both were Jewish and believed in the one true God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But Timothy's father was Greek and likely not a believer. Just work hard and be a good man, son. That's what really matters. Okay, Dad. One day, two men arrive in Lystra. Timothy may have heard them speaking in the center of town. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You can turn to him now. One of the two men even healed a man who had never been able to walk. The crowd was amazed. The gods have come down to us in human form uproar engulfed the city. People even tried to offer sacrifices to the two men, Paul and Barnabas, as if they were gods. But in the middle of the chaos, a group of Jews from nearby towns where Paul and Barnabas had preached showed up and convinced everyone to attack the man with stone and stake. Though the Jews dragged Paul outside the city and left him for dead, Paul got right back up. Timothy really surely heard about it. The power of this Jesus is real. Paul left for Derby the next day and returned again to Lystra. Timothy, his mother and grandmother, all listened to Paul's teaching, and all three became believers in Jesus. Paul continued on his journey, but left behind a small, thriving new church. We must pray each day and teach each other. Timothy, in the meeting tomorrow, you should tell the story Paul shared, the one about how Jesus raised a dead man. Oh, but I... <sighs> 
I don't really like to talk in front of people. I think you shall do very well. By the time Paul had returned several years later, Timothy had become a faithful disciple of Jesus. Everyone at the church spoke well of him. Timothy knows all the Hebrew scriptures. He is kind to everyone, not just those who are Jewish. And his father is a Greek man? Oh, yes. Paul was looking for someone to help encourage new churches, someone who knew God's words, someone who could speak to people from all different backgrounds. Timothy, I'd like you to travel with me and Silas and Luke. Me? Of course you. Oh, but there are others older than me with more experience. They're bold, they're, they're better at speaking. You're the one God has chosen for this job. Wow. Well, okay. The elders of the church laid their hands on Timothy and prayed for him. God's Spirit provided Timothy with everything he would need for the work ahead. Amen. We leave tomorrow. Over the next years, Timothy traveled with Paul all around the land to help encourage believers and start new churches. While they spent time in Ephesus, Paul gave Timothy a special mission. I want you to go to the church in Corinth. On my own? You're like a son to me. I trust you completely. The church there needs to see an example of what it means to follow Christ. And, well, you're it. Timothy went to Corinth. Over the years, Timothy became Paul's right-hand man. Paul even put him in charge of the church in Ephesus. The leaders in Ephesus are so much older than I am. Will they even listen to me? Your age doesn't matter. As Timothy settled in Ephesus, Paul wrote him letters to encourage him. Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and how you live. Also, set an example in how you love and in what you believe. Show the believers how to be pure. Though Timothy met Paul when he was a very young man, he was able to play an important part in helping Paul build up the early church and sharing the incredible news of Jesus. When Timothy was still a young man, the Apostle Paul wrote him a letter. In the letter, Paul wrote, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in how you live. You know what that means? You don't have to wait until you're older to make a difference. You could be an example for other people right now by how you live your life. When a friend is feeling down, you can help them find joy. You can make peace when you see two people fighting and you can tell them to stop. <laughs> by spreading God's love to the people around you, you can actually point others to Jesus. He's a real lifesaver. So here's the one thing to remember today. You can make a difference right now. Whether you're a junior or as old as 100, you can choose to be an example and make a difference no matter what. Now to eat all this candy. Not really. I'm no dud either. I'll see you next time.